Welcome to Power System Protection Lecture Series. This is the third lecture on fault analysis, and I am Pratap Mysore. Uh, in the first two lectures, we covered um, how to uh, look at the voltages, currents, and impedances in terms of per unit and not in terms of the volts, amps, and, impede and ohms, ohmic values, right? And then in this case, and, in this, and also we introduced the concept of sequence components to represent unbalanced network, unbalanced caused by the faults, uh, and a set of balanced networks so that we can uh, represent the whole system as single phase networks. And then we also looked at well, how these uh, sequence networks can be connected during faults, so different types of faults, face to ground or face to face or two face to ground or three face to ground faults, right? So we looked at it, but the only thing we assumed in all these cases was that we knew something about uh, representing the system impedance as sequence networks. In this uh, particular uh, session, we will look at how to get or how to measure the sequence impedances of various components in a, in, a, in a system. So we have static equipment, transformers, transmission lines, shunt reactors, and shunt capacitors. There is no moving part in this. So, um, yeah, you know, that is why we call them statics. On the other hand, we have rotating equipment. It could be synchronous generator, serial pole, or cylindrical pole, or motors, synchronous or squirrel cage, and wound motors. We have different types. And then when we have doubly fed induction machines, these are wind turbines, their contribution uh, to the fault is way different than synchronous machines. So that will also be just discussed. Okay. Now, if I have a transmission line and then I want to find out what is what impedances uh, that will pose for sequence impedances, easiest way is to test it out. Put a fault a three phase short circuit at the remote end, apply a positive sequence three phase voltage that is with an ABC rotation in counterclockwise to the A phase, B phase, and C phase of the system, measure the voltage, phase to neutral volt, ground voltage, and phase, to phase currents, and take the ratio that gives you the positive sequence. Now, if I need a negative sequence, what do I do? I just change the two phases to get an ACB rotation, just measure the voltage and current. Will there be any difference between these two? Since there is no moving part, it will not impact negative sequence will be equal to the positive sequence. And then if you take the zero sequence, then you short all the three terminals on both sides and apply a single phase uh, voltage on one side and then ground the other side. So what you measure in each phase uh, current, V0 by I0 provides you the zero sequence impedance. So this is how you can actually measure. But in uh, real uh, world, we go back and use Carlson's equations and calculate uh, the impedances of the line. Shunt capacitors, you do the same test, you find out that uh, both positive, uh, all positive, uh, negative, and zero sequence impedances are the same. Here, you apply a three phase voltage and you are apply a single phase voltage for uh, zero sequence, it that turns out to be the same, right? And then if it is ungrounded, then C0 becomes uh, uh, infinite. Uh, impedance of the zero sequence impedance becomes infinite. The same thing holds for, for the shunt reactors, right? Now, if it is a delta connected, it doesn't have a ground path, so you don't get the zero sequence. What does it tell you? Zero sequence is always there whenever there is a path to the ground, okay? That is what it comes out to. Now, we will look at a little complicated one, three-phase transformers, which has got a delta Y, uh, YY grounded or, uh, uh, you know, YY uh, with and without delta tertiary, we can look at it. And then three phase connections can be, um, uh, number of windings can be two or three, Y or delta, or YY or delta Y or Y delta, uh, where Y or delta can be at the high side and delta or Y can be the low side. And then you have an auto transformer. And the other complication you have is it has got a delta tertiary winding it could be the buried tertiary or they can bring out the terminals on an auto transformer, okay? And then the special case is zigzag transformers which are used as Z0, uh, zero sequence uh, source uh, to convert ungrounded systems to the grounded systems. We can use zigzag. So these are the auto transformers with and without delta. Zigzag transformers are connected as shown in, uh, in this figure. 
Now, if I take a delta y transformer, if it is a three core transformer, the construction is that the high side winding it will be on each uh, each high side winding will be on each limb of the uh, uh, each core uh, limb of this uh, of the of the core, and then correspondingly there will be a secondary winding on the on the other uh, the side. They are concentric one above the other, but in this case, for simplicity, I have shown like this. So now, if I the both uh, windings AC winding here, uh, if you look at this. This is uh, winding on this particular limb uh, on the high voltage side. One side is connected to A phase. Other side, if you go back, it is connected to C phase. That is this winding. And then on the same limb, you have another winding on the low voltage VA that is in, in uh, that is like, uh, seeing the same flux. So it, the rate of change of flux which produces the voltage. So they are these voltages will be in phase uh, if uh, the polarity side we have marked is considered uh, to be the high high voltage side of the uh, winding and the other side is a lower voltage side of the winding okay now if you look at it and if i create a fictitious y inside the delta you see that the high side y uh, voltage is leading this low side voltage by 30 degrees how do i say leading when i take this and multiply by e to the power of j30 that is uh, 30 degrees in a counterclockwise direction i get the a phase so the low side lacks the high side or high side leads the low side by 30 degrees. So we can represent this as VA1 equals K is the ratio of turns of the winding and then A VA1 is low side voltage and then E to the power of J30. Okay. Now this is a transformer physically. You have seen that these are the high voltage windings and these are the low voltage windings. Uh, I just put it in for those when I was teaching in the school to show them how a transformer looks like. Okay. Transformer connections, A phase is connected to H1 bushing, H, B to H2 bushing, and 3 or H2, H3 bushings. And there are four bushings on the low side, X1, X2, X3 correspond to phase A, B, and C. And N uh, is a neutral bushing, uh, which is connected to X0. So that is connected to ground if it is a grounded Y, or not connected if it is not ungrounded. Okay. Now, voltage on the Y side lacks... Um, on the voltage on the y side lacks the voltage on the high side that is what we talked about and we look like this now for the current the polarity that is of the current coming into the transformer is taken as positive and if the transformer is serving the load the low voltage current is going out of the transformer to the load that is considered negative and then the high side that is coming into the transformer is considered as positive so if you look at it the relationship between IA on the high side and IA on the low side will be 210 degrees off. So you are the VA and IA are 180 degrees out because uh, yeah, and uh, it's a resistive load I have considered here and VA and IA on the high side will be in phase. Okay, and they just a polarity convention that is all. So now if you look at the, the how to measure the impedance of the transformer, you apply three phase voltage on H1, H2 and H3 bushings and then short the low side X1, X2, X3 and X0. Then you measure, uh, you uh, apply the voltage till it reaches, uh, till you are passing the rated current. You should not exceed the rated current of the winding on the high side. Then uh, you may take the voltage and divide it by the current. This gives me the short circuit impedance. And this is the positive sequence impedance, right? And now if I just rotate the, uh, phase uh, phase on the high side instead of ABC it is ACB I get the same value so the positive sequence and negative sequence impedances on the transformer will be the same okay now sequence uh, quantities and shift now if I apply a negative sequence in positive sequence I was applying A phase to H1 bushing B phase uh, to H2 and C phase to H3 now in the case of a negative sequence I connected A phase to H1, but B phase to H3 and C phase to H2. So we just switch, swap two uh, thing, uh, two terminals on the high side to provide a positive uh, a negative sequence quantities, right? So ABC instead of ACB rotation, it is ABC. If you take ABC rotation, it is clockwise here. So now I want to flip and then similarly the low side, X1 bushing becomes the A phase x2 becomes the c phase and x3 becomes the b phase now if you look at it and then it is in the clockwise direction i want to just rewrite this 
uh, same as H1, H3, and ABC in the right phase rotation. So what do I do? I just hold the H3 terminal and flip it. So what I have done here is I have taken this, held it, and then moved it onto this side. So when I do that, I get A phase on H1, B phase is on H3, and C phase is on H2. So I just flipped it. So and then if you look at it here, I held the X3 and moved it back to the other side. Just rewrote the whole uh, thing so that my phase rotation, I wanted to keep it as counterclockwise, right? So when you do that here, what happens here? If you look at it, suddenly the low side voltage, which was lagging the high side voltage, it is now leading the high side voltage, right? So it looks like a magic. What it is is the negative sequence, if you apply a positive sequence voltage to a delta Y transformer with a low side lagging the high side, then the low side voltages also lag the high side voltage in positive sequence, okay? But if you apply a negative sequence and then, and then uh, if you look at it, it uh, shifts in the opposite direction. So the positive sequence for a delta Y transformer with a 30 degrees lag, if you apply a positive sequence, yeah, the low side will be lagging the high side. If you apply a negative sequence, low side will be leading the high side. So this is a major thing which you have to look at it. Why do we have to look at it? At the fault point, we converted all the phase quantity to sequence quantities. And when you are going through a transformer uh, transformation from one voltage level to another voltage level, you have to apply this phase shift. And then when you apply the phase shift, the positive sequence gets shifted the way the winding configuration is, whereas the negative sequence gets shifted in the opposite or uh, opposite to the way the windings are configured. It is a very important thing. You have to remember this. Apply zero sequence. Now, if you apply zero sequence voltage to an, a, a, a delta, what happens? The voltage on H1 and H across the H1 and H2 is same, V0, right? So there will be no current. That means you are applying a voltage and then there is no current, uh, the impedance is infinite. So the delta terminals of a transformer offers infinite zero sequence impedance and it can be represented as shown here. Now, zero sequence impedance from grounded Y side, if you apply a zero sequence uh, voltage with three phase voltage and all the three currents are same, they induce uh, voltages on the closed delta and you see it becomes a circulating current. So the transformer offers an impedance as if a transformer uh, see, uh, uh, offers an impedance as though the delta winding is shorted. So for a zero sequence impedance from the grounded Y side, delta winding automatically provides a short circuit and then provides uh, the flow of the current for that. So you can represent this as um, uh, shown here, okay? So now there are zero, zero sequence impedance also depends on the core in addition to the winding configuration. You have three phase core, a shell type and three phase space symmetrical form. Zero sequence impedance values are less than the positive sequence in the core type. Why is this? If you apply a voltage on the Y winding, then the flux not only goes through the delta winding, um, or it also goes through the tank tank provides a return path. So it is about six times the impedance between the Y and delta. So effectively, the zero sequence impedance is about 85 to 90% of the positive sequence impedance. So we can, uh, if it is a core form, it is true, but if it's a shell form, it remains the same. Multi-winding transformers, instead of two windings, you have three windings. And then uh, what you do is, you short the impedance, one winding shorted and other open. If you are finding from ZP to ZS, primary to secondary, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary are three windings, then ZPS, ZPT minus ZST gives me ZP. And then PP, ZPS means you short the secondary, keep the tertiary open, third winding open, and then uh, measure the impedance from the primary, short circuit impedance from the primary side. Similarly, you repeat for each one and then you can put this as a T network like this. Now, if it is a delta connected, as I said, if it is a Y, then it provides automatically a short. So you, even if you don't short a delta side of the terminal, it provides a short. 
So when I do this with the second winding short end, the delta comes in parallel with the second winding if the third winding is a delta. So that is why the manufacturers provide four impedances. You measure the impedance from the high side to the low side open. That is, it just takes the delta to give you the zero sequence between ZP and ZT and then secondary open. And then what you do is you short it and do that. That is test true too. And you can do it from the low side also in a similar fashion. We get test three and four. Now, IEEE C57 1290, the, the, the test requirements for the transformer does ask all the manufacturers to provide this data. Now, you have Z1, Z2, and Z3 here. That is what I have taken here as a three terminal uh, network. Uh, and then uh, for the zero sequence with respect to neutral, uh, Z3 can be taken as this is the open circuit with the secondary side from the secondary side with the primary open and then the primary with the secondary open and primary with the secondary short. If you do this test, then you can that will be Z3. Or if you have done the other test instead of uh, test four has done with the primary shorted from the secondary side, you can use this. Essentially, it gives you the same results as ZPS, ZPAT and Z, uh, ZST. Okay, and then uh, three measurements are made and here is an example of this. I don't want to go through this. Please do take time and then go through this and calculate the impedance values for this. Okay, these are the test reports of the auto trans transformers I've just provided so that you can understand uh, how where to look for the data. So if you look at this, you give your loss guaranteed is there and their guaranteed losses they give, they give you the excitation current that gives you the model of the transformer and load losses. If you look at it, uh, they give you the load loss at the MVA that gives you the resistance of the winding and then the short circuit impedance is also given uh, somewhere here. I think here they give you this here, the primary to tertiary and then secondary to tertiary is given here and then uh, primary to secondary percentage impedance is given here, 6.22 for this particular test. So use this, spend some time looking at other uh, documentation and then use it. Most of the times you don't have to monitor everything. Your, these are required to model the transformer in your uh, short circuit programs. You don't hand calculate any of these nowadays. You just go back and model uh, the, uh, the system and then put in, uh, enter the appropriate positive, negative and zero sequence impedances. So what you have to remember here is if it is a delta Y transformer, from the delta side, there is no path for zero sequence flow. From the Y side, it provides a short on the low side and then it provides a, a short circuit. If you do the same test for a zigzag transformer also, positive sequence, it gives a very high impedance and then it doesn't work. But for a zero sequence, it provides a path. So that is why when you connect a zigzag transformer to the system, it doesn't offer any impedance to the positive sequence and then it offers a very low impedance, short circuit impedance for the zero sequence. That is why it is used as a grounding transformer. And these are just calculations. Please do go through that. I, uh, there is no point in me looking at it. Please do look at this lecture and then uh, go through each one of those. Synchronous impedance of the generators is the only one that we didn't look at it so far. We cannot go back and measure this. This is given by the manufacturers. So what they do is, they put a sudden three phase short circuit to the terminals of the synchronous uh, um, uh, generator and then they give you three times uh, 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 they get a decaying current of that of uh, the short circuit current. So the first period is only few cycles. It could be as high as six cycles. This is called a subtransient period. Whatever trap flux between the field and the generator, it goes through and provides a short circuit path and then increases the current. So it gives you the subtransient period. We call it as with uh, X double prime uh, D. And these are uh, 0.15 to 0.25 per unit. And it's most useful for relay calculations because when we create a short circuit, we want to know whether the breaker is capable of withstanding that short circuit current. We try to do this in uh, first few cycles of the fault incidents. So this is very useful. And this is the one which we use in all our relays. And then in 0.1 to 0.3 seconds, the decay of the DC is much lower. And then it's a slower rate. This is called the transient period. Where do they use it? They use it in stability studies. 
and then the trans trans impedance increases from 0.15. It can go from 0.2 to 0.35 per unit. And after three seconds, it becomes a steady state. It could be as high as one to 3.5 per unit. So these are used uh, in generally in the load flow studies, but most of the times subtransient uh, transient is used uh, for a lot of those uh, studies whenever there is a sudden change and then subtransient is used for fault calculations which we are interested so generator sequence impedances negative sequence reactance is very different impedance is very different because you have a rotating thing when i when the generator is rotating in a counterclockwise direction if i apply a clockwise uh, voltage on the terminals then the flux is cut at twice the frequency so it offers uh, a short circuit path on the rotor and it results in heating so you cannot have a higher negative sequence currents on our voltages impinged on the generator so you cannot uh, continuously run a generator with an unbalanced uh, condition so you have to take it out they are using empirical methods to calculate this value again all these numbers are given by the manufacturer the X2 is close to subtransient reactance. It's very close to that. Zero sequence depending on depends on the grounding. Generally, a generator is not grounded solid because if a fault occurs in a generator, then you have if you have excessive damages, then it becomes um, you know you pretty much destroy the generator. So what they do is for a loss of insulation. Generally, these generators are also connected to the delta side of a step up transformer. So they put a very high impedance to limit the current up to 20, 25 amperes on that. Uh, it's a very uh, much less than your full load current on the, uh, on the transformer uh, on the, for a short circuit current. So they put a high impedance grounding and then uh, zero sequence, if you put it here, it becomes three times Zn. I'm just uh, giving you some uh, brief uh, uh, introduction to sequence components. The intent here was not to take you through detailed calculations and just to expose you to how these are done. That was the intent of these uh, three lectures. And then if you want to uh, 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 go through details, go through the uh, network protection and automation. And also there are a lot of uh, symmetrical component books written on symmetrical components. Um, Edith Clark's was the best, which is not in print now but there are a lot of other books, please do refer to them to get in depth, um, uh, uh, they cover in depth uh, this particular uh, topic. So generator data, when you look at it, there is one more thing we uh, get it. They give a saturated subtransient and unsaturated subtransient. What it is, is it depends on whether the generator was running full load or at full load or when uh, or, or at no load when the fault occurred when the generator is not loaded then the saturation takes place partial saturation of the core so you get a saturated subtransient reactance uh, when a short circuit occurs that is generally lower okay and when the generator is fully loaded then you have armature reaction and then the, because of that it comes out of saturation uh, and then if you look at it it is uh, uh, higher 0.285 instead of 0.201. As uh, engineers, you don't know when the fault occurs. We want to be as conservative as possible. So we try to use the saturated subtransient reactants. Similarly, uh, you know, you have saturated transient and unsaturated transient. But our point where we look in the region is only first few cycles. We try to use saturated subtransient reactants. Okay, and then uh, they give you the losses, load losses. And that gives you the resistive portion of the of the winding. So then, how do you calculate uh, this in per unit? I squared R loss. If you know it's 500 kilowatt, and then if you know the generator is rated for 470 MVA, 500 kilowatt divided by 470 uh, uh, MVA will give you per unit uh, loss. You can directly connect it. Divide this by the rated value MVA, and then you get the per unit resistance. Okay, that is very easy for you to do that. Uh, if you look in detail, that will provide you, will give you much better answers. So in short, when we looked at the modeling, we could easily go back and measure the positive sequence impedance, negative sequence impedance, and zero sequence impedance of a transmission line, a transformer, or a reactor, or, um, or a 
a capacitor, shunt capacitor or a shunt reactor. But when it comes to generator, we have to ask for the generator manufacturer to provide a data and this is how they give you a test uh, report that will have that. Similarly, for the transformer impedances also, they provide you a test report, you use that. And then whereas uh, you know the impedance of uh, shunt reactor and shunt capacitors, and that will be the positive zero and negative sequence reactance. And that is very straightforward. For the transmission line, you use Carson equations and then you calculate. But if you don't have the numbers, you can go back and measure it. Sometimes you will not have a zero sequence impedance of a buried tertiary transformer. You can go back and apply a single phase voltage and take the actual measurements and then do this. So now once we have all this data, what do we do with this? We go back and then enter these values in the, in the short circuit program and then we run the fault calculations to take care of that. If you do want to do it by hand calculations, you can go back and use these and then develop a system and then uh, take care of that. I think uh, we are at the end of this and then in the next lecture, we'll continue on the fault uh, location. When it comes to the wind, uh, wind depends on the model type, if it is electronic controls or not. They have type one, type two, type three, type four and then uh, electronic controls limit the contribution to fault current or, uh, or, or to zero uh, and in R2 it can be either full load depending on the what is the terminal voltage of that or to zero if the voltage is too low. And then if it is uh, uh, fully type four with uh, full electronics, you may not get any fault current after quarter cycle or half, half a cycle. So that is all uh, we have for this and we'll uh, try to cover it in the next lecture. Thank you.